First up tonight, most Australians would probably be blissfully unaware that tens of thousands of Sri Lankan-born Tamils are living peacefully in this country, thousands of kilometres from the violence that's been plaguing their homeland for decades. In recent months, however, the terror and anguish experienced by families in Sri Lanka has been visited on their relatives here in Australia. Dateline's been told of 18 separate cases of Tamils, Australian citizens, permanent residents or their relatives, who've been kidnapped back in Sri Lanka and held for ransom. Some have been released, but the lives of others still hang in the balance. Nick Lazaridis has investigated three Sydney families caught up in this epidemic of abductions. Understandably, they were prepared to talk so long as we didn't reveal their identities. Ransom was collected within three days or four days after kidnapping. Now it is almost a year. So what is happening? Our priority is to first get him out. And I have heard a lot of stories about people disappearing in Sri Lanka, never come back, and you know, people find bodies of you know people everywhere. So. You know, we want to pay whatever it is and get him out. From the time he get home in the end of April, he don't talk anything. He don't say much. So to now, your brother-in-law has never said a word about this? No. Until recently, Tamils have lived peacefully with their Sinhalese neighbours in Sri Lanka's capital, Colombo. But in the past two years, they've been subject to a dramatic rise in kidnappings, extortion and in some cases, murder. It's an easy way of making money. It's an easy way of inflicting terror in the community. And it's an easy way of um, ethnic cleansing. Dr Mano Mahan is a Sydney cardiologist and a leading figure in the Australian Tamil community. He says the kidnapping and disappearances of Tamils has reached epidemic proportions. This is going on for the last two years without any rhyme or reason. And Tamils of Sri Lanka are fed up, they live in fear, and Tamils of Sri Lankan origin who live abroad, who are citizens of other countries, are unable to visit their kit and kin for, for fear of being abducted, a fear of being killed. Um, this is a state of affairs. It's anarchy. Dr. Mahan told Dateline of several disappearances which have had terrible consequences for Tamils living in Australia. He introduced me to three men here in Sydney, all Australian citizens, who've had relatives abducted from the streets of Colombo. Concerned for their family's safety, none were prepared to be identified. Front door, the owner for front door, there was some writing on by chalk, asking her to go to a certain phone booth at a certain time. She'd been there, was waiting, and uh, at the right time there was a call from the phone. Devon, not his real name, told Dateline his sister's husband was kidnapped and the kidnappers told her to get a $60,000 ransom from Sydney. Uh, and somebody was talking, not in pure Tamil, not in Sinhalese, sort of in between, speaking Tamil but in a different accent, telling her that uh, they got uh, her husband and demanding for 50 lakh. Rupees. Now, what is 50 lakh in Australian 50 dollars? 50 lakh is in Australian money is about $60,000. Uh, and she was crying. And Unable to raise so much cash quickly, right. yeah. Devon offered his sister what he could. So I told her that I'll try and get at least $10,000 or something like that. And she said, no, it's going to be very, very hard. They are going to kill him if we don't do something to start with. Then I asked her to get some time and I told her that within one week I'll try and get some money. Cobbling together a few high interest private loans and keeping the entire business a secret from his immediate family here in Sydney, Devon sent a $40,000 ransom to his sister in Sri Lanka. His brother-in-law was released but refuses to talk about the experience. 
my sister tried to because I told my sister to find out something. She was uh, <laughs> trying to get something out of him. He don't even say nothing, not even a word. When she talk, start talking about it, he just looks somewhere else and just keep quiet. Most of the time, he don't even talk. Devon's story had a happy ending, but Dateline met another Australian Tamil family whose relative has not been released even after the ransom was paid. It's real agony. It's not only one. So many people undergoing. Uh, certainly we would love if Australian government and help at least to find out what is happening. Morali, not his real name, is still waiting for news of his brother-in-law, an Australian citizen who disappeared in Colombo over a year ago. The following day, um, someone, uh, somebody said that uh, he, um, he, he will be released if you all pay a ransom. My brother-in-law came on the cell phone and he said uh, to pay them what are they asking. And they asked uh, a large sum of money um, in the order of uh, millions in Sri Lankan rupees. Morali uh, says his uh, family uh, paid the kidnappers more than a million dollars asked, uh, to release his brother-in-law, a wealthy businessman. Um, in the order of... Several months later, he hadn't been released and the family went to the Sri Lankan government. Morali says the family was told by a government minister that this Tamil paramilitary force, the Karuna Group, was behind the abduction. Last year, Dateline filmed the Karuna Group, which is accused of acting as a proxy force for the government in its war against the Tamil Tigers. Our government minister helped promise that uh, he should be able to uh, get him released. And he said he know that he is abducted by Karuna Group. He said that. The minister confirmed minister, this, minister confirmed. that it was the Karuna group involved. Yes, that is the uh, gorilla group of Gar Karuna group that uh, was involved and they will, uh, um, he will help to release him. But uh, I think they were going, um, they were trying for nearly two months. At the end of two months, uh, he said that he can't help. Did he say why he couldn't help? Uh, he, he said that uh, he, he can't help, they are not listening to him, the people who have claimed. Um, the, the people that have him? Yeah. Right. The family also spoke to the Department of Foreign Affairs here in Canberra, which in turn asked Australia's High Commission in Colombo to contact the Sri Lankan government. The family says it was told nothing more could be done to determine whether he was dead or alive. They are disappointed in that these human rights violations and uh, excesses are not being questioned openly uh, by the Australian government or the Foreign Office or for that matter the High Commission there. Um, so that is definitely uh, uh, something that's causing a lot of disappointment and disillusionment amongst Australian citizens of Sri Lankan Tamil origin. The Department of Foreign Affairs told Dateline in an email that it's unable to confirm the veracity of these kidnappings, but it also said that it's asked the Sri Lankan government at a high level to have reported cases of abduction investigated, the relevant person released safely, and to prevent future cases reoccurring. I don't like to use the word abductions in that manner, specifically the sense that every disappearance is not an abduction. Because these numbers are exaggerated, highly exaggerated numbers. Sri Lanka's High Commissioner to Australia, Kusumpala Balapatabendi, says that if some Tamils have been found dead, it's probably just a result of Sri Lanka's long-running civil war. Amazingly, he accuses Tamils of making up their kidnapping stories. I can hide somewhere and get my wife to come to the police that I am missing. I am abducted. This is happening because this is tarnishing the image of the country. They are trying to distract the international community from our country in their in efforts to solve this problem. But many people have turned up dead. Well, maybe a few people in, the, in a war, people have to die. But, but 430 people have died. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe more or less. It can be because in a war, no one knows who is dying, who is not dying. But with 430 kidnapped victims turning up dead, the Sri Lankan government has been criticised by human rights groups.